Good morning, here we are at the Sharon Blaine Education Studio. Uh, please take the time to have a look online and check out our upcoming workshops. We've got the Artist Edge coming next to Perth in the beginning of July and then Toronto in the middle of August. Uh, then we're on to Sydney, Brisbane, New York, LA, Houston, Rome, Rome, yay, Dusseldorf. So there should be something for everyone. Sharon's going to do a couple of quick ready to wear live demos for you this morning. Please send your comments and I'll pass them on to her. Okay, hi everyone. It's, um, nice and early here in Sydney. Um, I'm just working on a couple of quick ideas for you today. Excuse me, leaning over to my little makeshift trolley. I've just added a little bit of oil to the hair. So what we've got going on in here is just a, just a regular uh, hot roller set. Just something really loose, just to put a bend in the hair. I've also come through and at the very back section, I've created a scalp braid across the back just to pin all the hairstyling to it. I find that's a great way to help you, uh, you know, pin thoroughly into the hair and be really comfortable with what you're going to end up with. You're not going to be second guessing yourself and wondering if it's going to last. So the first thing I'm going to do now is just take off the side section. So I'm not looking to make this too perfect, so I don't mind that I have a little section here that's not so clean and perfect. Uh, I'll clip that away and we'll do the same on the other side. So I'll start obviously within the center in the back of the hair and then we're going to work around to the sides and incorporate those in. So this is just a sort of a very soft little um, session look, nothing too sort of uh, too structured, quite disheveled and quite loose and natural looking. But a nice quick way to give your clients an updo that will help you get them out of the salon nice and fast but also feel fairly comfortable about what you're doing and know that it will work quite nicely. So the first thing I'm going to do is just gather all the hair, um, brush it through thoroughly of course and gather it all into a little low pony. So I like to make sure all the knots are right through. If there's any questions Sharon, there's a lot of people tuning in and saying hola, which is very exciting. Oh, I like the Spanish ones. Yes, yes, but could you guys just give me a thumbs up if you can hear her? Can you hear Sharon? You'll have to speak, Sharon, so they can hear you. I have to speak, so can you hear me talking? Can you hear me? Please say yes, please say no. Yeah, lots of thumbs up and love. Super, so, yeah, that's great. great. Okay, right. keep going. So as you can see, I've placed a little band, and this is the actual braid line. So it's quite a few, well, inches, so it's probably two and a half inches below. That's probably about six centimetres for the centimetre country. And all I'm going to do now is just slide through the centre back and just flip the tail inside out. That'll give sort of a nice sort of feeling to the hair where I can roll it together. And now at the same time, what I'm going to do is just back comb the base for a little bit of padding. So what's left of the pony, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, texture into. So this will sort of help pump up this little roll that I'm about to create with this hairstyle. So I'm now going to just roll this hairstyle up and I'm going to tuck that into the actual braid that I've done. So how we're going to do that is just roll it through. I'm going to just get this a tad higher. Roll it up and just pin all that little bit of texture into the braid. So don't sort of pin it too flat. I'm coming in with a bobby pin that's unopened because I find an unopened bobby pin holds a lot better than a open bobby pin but I want to make sure it's nice and secure in there before I do anything else. So once I've done that now all I'm going to do is just hold the elastic and give it a pull out. So just loosen it all up and when I do that the whole of that uh, section through the back get, gets covered up which is quite nice. I'll just move these side pieces now so I'll give them a nice little pull out. You must always hold that um, band so you don't pull it all off and you need to sort of give that a little bit of so you can get a little bit of tension in the pull out but I'll work through the sides doing a little bit more pulling out and once I've done that now what I'm going to do is just loop this hair up and over the padding base that I created so back in through here with a few bobby pins give this a nice little bit of volume so just soft and gentle just lift it and rough it up with your fingers we're pulling it together. I'll add a little touch of oil in that so it doesn't go too sort of fly away and too rough. I always use the Goldwell Diamond Gloss. I like the oil because it's uh, quite a nice product to work with and it doesn't weigh the hair down. Just put a pin in that to pull it over. Now we're just going to gather all these edges down and over the padding base. 
So it sort of covers up all that sort of texture and um, teasing that I put in there. And you can see why the reason why I have the um, braid underneath, because it really helps so much to be able to give you a nice platform to pin into. And you know you're not just pinning for the sake of pinning and praying that it's all going to last and hold together as well. So pull it together through here. Just anchor it right in nice and tight. So something really soft. And this way now I can sort of shift it around, move it up and just finish it off. So that's as simple as the back is. It's nothing terribly constructed. Just really, really natural and beautifully sort of just placed. It's a great way to make short hair, uh, sorry, long hair shorter too. I think a lot of people with long hair sometimes like to have it up, but they don't like it to look sort of too structured. I, I'm loving hair that's a little bit loose, a little bit more contrived, not too sort of done looking. When I look at that piece of hair there, it's just, I'm not happy with the actual length that it's traveling. It needs a little bend in it. So I'm just going to weave through a bobby pin and just pin it back up a little bit. So we just change the angle of the way that hair's been moving. How's everyone going? Can they see what I'm doing? They are. Patrick uh, from New York says hello. Hello, Patrick. And we have Brazil, Italy, Colorado, um, Kilcare Island. What is that? Ireland. Oh, in Ireland. Oh, of course. <laughs> How should I not know that? Hello uh, to all our gorgeous Irish hairdressing friends over there. Yes. Someone we, has said come to Spain. Eric, we just, we've just come just home come back from, from Spain. Spain. So uh, if you're in Spain, check out La Universidad de la Imagen and uh, they have dates for us coming up in Rome. So I've just done a really gentle little twist there and I'm going to just place it in just through the side section here and once again, come back in at the back of it and inside the twist, I'm, I have opened my bobby pin this time just to twist it in at the back end of that twist. So I'll open up another bobby pin and come right back in. So making sure that that's really pushed in nice and tight and right in loose, you know, sort of so it stops it from being too loose and it's a little bit more gentle. Now that end, all I'm going to do with that is just do a really soft little twist to texture and we'll just tuck that back in, in underneath there. So nothing too complex, nothing too complicated. This is sort of like the hairstyle that you create on a Saturday morning when you've got someone that's driving you crazy they need to get out and you need to do something quick and fabulous that's not going to take you know all morning and you sort of win a little bit of creed with your clients on this one because it's a very easy nice sort of look to wear without it being too sort of done and too formal it's looking beautiful sharon do you like that Julie? do you i do that looks Good. fantastic so you notice i'm just going to touch it with a little bit of hairspray now nothing nothing too much just a little bit of a touch I'm not a hairspray fan. In fact, anyone who works with me will see that I very rarely use hairspray at all. I, I believe in the power of the, uh, getting the hair set right, making sure it's all together beautiful. And then from there, we then start um, hoping that uh, your pinning is significant enough that it's not going to need anything more than some pins. So there's my front section. I'll just do a really gentle sort of pull back. It's got a nice sort of bit of movement in it, but I don't particularly think it needs, uh, you know, it doesn't need anything more. Just that gentle sort of wave that I put in from the um, hot rollers have worked really, really nicely. So I'm just so, going to push sorry. this through in low. Yeah. I've got a question. What is the spray that you're using? So the silver can is the Gold World Diamond Gloss. It's a spray shine. And the black can is a light to medium hold hairspray as well. Mostly you see Sharon use the spray shine rather than the hairspray. I like the combination of the two products together. I love it because I feel that when I use a little bit of oil that I don't end up with my head looking like a plastic, uh, like a, a, the shape of a plastic bowl. You know, I'm not a fan of anything that looks plastic and unnatural. So very rarely, I'm not a hairdresser that uses hairspray. So I'm very keen to make sure that if I am using hairspray that I counteract the build-up of spray by using a touch of oil at the same time. It's an old-fashioned thing that I've done forever, but I love the way it gives that beautiful soft sort of result. So I just finished that off very, very quickly in the corner here. It doesn't need too much work. Does everyone agree that they could do this hairstyle? You're getting a lot of love and a lot of amazing 
Great. Yes. So, um, so, Julie, we're heading off to Perth in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah. Uh, we're going to do a fantastic event called Hair Aid. And um, we're going to fly in for the Sunday show, which is going to be just gorgeous. Uh, we're doing a couple of live models for all those folks over in Perth in, at a Sunday forum that they've got set up. And that's raising money for a really amazing cause called Hair Aid. And um, in Australia, a lot of hairdressers are behind this event um, you know, giving their time voluntary to help those disadvantaged um, in Asian countries. So we're going to go and help them make some money, hopefully in Perth. So we need everybody to show up and do that for us. And also while we're there, we're um, tacking on a couple of other events. We're going to be doing a fantastic event for Intercore Pure. And also we're going to be doing our three-day workshop. So... Um, that's all happening in four days, isn't it? So that's lots of mm. things to do in four days. It's a busy time. Yeah. So listen, somebody has asked, do you only use hot rollers or do you use a curling tong? I use both, but this is a very quick updo. And for me personally, I'm much quicker on doing some hot rollers than I am on trying to do a, a curling tong. So I'll always opt for the hot roller because I know I can get that done fast. Really all you're looking for in this particular situation is just a little bit of um, body, a little bit of bounce, something to give you some root lift and some movement, not looking for anything too, you know, sort of formalized. So definitely I would say, let's go the hot rollers if you can do that quicker, because you don't need anything more than what a hot roller can give you. So Texas, we're definitely coming to you in August. We're coming to Houston. Dallin Flint says hello in your amazing show. Oh, Sharon. I love Dallin Flint. Hi, Dallin. Lovely to <laughs> hear from you. There are a lot of messages here, so I apologise if I miss you, but Wollongong and Adelaide would like to see you. At this stage, guys, we won't be coming there this year, uh, but we are going to be in Perth, Sydney, and then up in Brisbane for the Hair Biz show. So those are I know dates. for not Hair Biz, we've done that one. Um, we're going to do, oh, that's great, isn't Where it? We're just we? going, uh, what we're going to be doing is the uh, Brisbane, Brisbane Expo, Brisbane Hair Expo, Expo. I yeah. beg your pardon. Yeah. Um, so where can you get tickets to any of these things? Just jump online on our website, www.sharonblain, and uh, everything is on there. And if you can't see something that you're thinking about that we've spoken about, just send us an email and we'll sort that out. We'd love to come to Tennessee. Is Houston near Tennessee? Otherwise, you've got um, L.A. or New York to choose from. Okay, so that's me done. Something really simple, nothing too complicated. Virtually, it's the back section that I pulled into a low pony. I flipped it upside down. I back combed the ponytail and tucked it underneath to give that little bit of volume. And then from there, I just um, pulled out the ponytail and gave this sort of soft fold to the hair. Then I've moved to the sides, I've just added the side in, I've pinned a little twist and just left the ends sort of just hanging randomly through the side panel and I've done the same virtually on the other side. So nothing too complicated, I think this would be a great sort of style for, you know, a prom, a formal, a bridesmaid, any of that sort of thing. So anyhow, that's one style for you and let me quickly take you through what I'm doing um, at Bridal Expo this week. Actually, it's not Bridal Expo. We've got so many expos going. This is Bridal Fashion Week in Australia. So somebody wants you to come to London Fashion Week next week. Sorry, we just got home from London, so we're not about to do that big flight again next week, <laughs> although we'd love to. <laughs> oh, my God. We've just got back from um, Spain and London, and believe me, we, we're sort of happy to be home just for this week at least. Okay, so let me quickly show you what I've done here. So first off, I've kicked off with a directional blow dry through the front. And notice this baby braid that I've got here across the back. I'm going to actually pin a false braid across the top of this. And the reason being is that this is a style that we're going to be doing later on in the week at um, Sydney, um, where they're having the Bridal Fashion Week take place. And I'm heading up a couple of shows. So I thought it might be fun to show you what I'm going to be doing there. So first off, that same little twisty thing, let me first show you the, the sectioning at the back. So I've gone to a deep V right around long t on top of the exhibitable bone and back to the other side. So virtually we've taken in that whole braid section and then we're sent apart down the back on both sides. So first off, I'm going to drop the back section in. And once again, I'm taking a little baby band here so I really like working with these little tiny bands. I never use an anti-snag band. I find that if I work with anti-snag bands when I want to pull hair out, 
Um, it sort of tangles and snags the hair as it's supposed to do. So it doesn't work too well for me. So I'm much happier if I'm working with um, a band that I can use, just a regular elastic band. I've done quite a lot of braids for this show. This is just one of them. It's a, I think this is a four strand that I've created. And I'm just finding the center of that. And I'll use a long pin now just to um, hold it into its position on the top. So I'll come back and pin that, but at this stage, this is all I'm going to do with that. Come through on the side here with another long pin, and we'll just take that through and lock that in at the side as well. So that's so, just holding it into place. This, and this could be done with the client's hair as well, but um, for this particular um, show, they wanted to have coloured hair, so this is what we've been working with. So um, Christina and Susan from County Cork are um, tuned in and keen to see us. We'll see you girls soon in Ireland. Um, somebody has asked about London, but London, we're done for this year. We do have Rome and Dusseldorf in October. So if you check the web website for that, you'll be able to find those dates. And Toronto will be there in the middle of August. I'm looking forward to Toronto. I love going to Toronto. Great people up there. So... Uh, we've got a few bookings left. I must say they are filling up quite fast. So, um, you know, don't leave it too late. I think a lot of people sort of leave things till the last minute and then it becomes sort of like, well, I'm really sorry because we are very limited in all the locations that we're going to with class numbers. I know, for example, in um, Dusseldorf, we can only take 20 people in the class. So, you know, when you have limitations on um, seating, it becomes very difficult when people book in it, want to try and book in at the last minute and it's not a and it's not going to happen. Now you can see what I've done now. First off, I've obviously done the pony in the back. I've laid the braid across the top. I'm now pulling the two sides down and just creating just a three strand braid right at the bottom. So nothing to trick. It's how it all turns out in the end that's what it's all about. Okay, so Miami, Florida, no, but we would love to come. Um, Santa Monica will be there in August, so check that one out. That book's out very quickly, and I think there's only a couple of places left. Yeah, actually, we're pretty close to the end on Santa Monica. Somebody wants to book an appointment with you, Sharon. Are you a bride? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I do brides anymore. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, I'm not a real... I'm not a doer of um, weddings anymore. I used to do a lot of them. I much prefer to teach stylists how to do hair. Um, that's sort of my big thing now, so I've pretty much dedicated my life to teaching hairdressers how to dress hair and I think I have the ability to be able to do that because of my longevity in this industry. I've been around for a long time. All right, so let's put this whole thing together nice and quickly. So we pull the ponytail down. Once again, we're going to do the flip thing because I like the way that gives me an extra ability to flip up the crown and just loosen it up and pull it together. So see how that just does that. Now I'm going to take this pony and I'm going to wrap it around and just pin it low and tight just at the bottom here. So nothing too formalized. Okay, Sharon, do you prep the hair with a shine spray or hairspray prior to or after the set? Okay, my setting, my prep for this is always going to be a, a blow dry with some um, a blow dry lotion that will give me some nice texture to the hair, but it won't weigh the hair down. So it's really important to make sure that I smooth and get the, um, the cuticle nice and flat and the hair polished and shiny before I begin any sort of prep. Then I start with my setting. So when I set, I always now come through and I'm just going to pin this down. Then I come through with a hot form again, which is a thermal product. And that I then use to prep the hair with. Um, so I set with that. I don't ever really set, although sometimes if the hair I'm concerned about, I might put a little bit of hairspray over the top of the hair um, if I feel it's a little bit soft, but generally not. So see how I'm going to lift this up and over now? It's a bit of a Dolce & Gabbana sort of look that they did um, a season or so back with, but this is sort of, I'm sort of saying that the braid is the, the piece and it's not the beautiful hair jewellery that they normally have and they've been going with lately. So this is my sort of ode to that. Okay, so um, hello Linda, Darwin, we love to visit you, but we're not on the calendar for 2016, but let's talk about 2017. And Shamalia, we would love to come to Asia. And yes, if you have 20 friends, then we can definitely come. So just email me at julie at sharonblaine.com, J-U-L-I-E, and we'll talk about Asia. 
Yeah, I think, um, you know, for us, the places we go to are the people that tend to invite us. And then they help us find a location to host our classes. And that's how we've got to be in most of the locations around the world, generally through invitation and people asking us to come and do education for them. Now, there's a lot of Spanish here. I think people have um, heard the rumour that we speak Spanish. Hola. Oh, hola. That's all we speak, though. <laughs> so I'm sorry I can't um, answer your Spanish questions like this, but maybe next time. Maybe they could talk to Christina. Uh, yeah. Would that be a good plan? Yeah. So I'm just sort of going to take this through here and just pull it in underneath that little bit of a bubble on the top. It all looks a little bit strange, so just bear with me. Just hold your breath as it all happens. And now we're just going to pull this in at the back. I've just, as you can see, I've loosened up these um, braids quite a lot because I don't want them to look sort of too too just sort of too perfect. I'm going to pull them together here with a pin. So I'll pin them together. Scratching around here with all my pins, struggling to get the right ones. And pull them together and tuck up. So I'm just going to pull them and push them up into the nape and take some bobby pins through and just latch them in there. Sharon, what is your brand of hairpins? That's a great question, Curtis. Do you want to ask that, answer that, Julie? Yeah, so um, we don't really have a brand that we definitely use all the time, but Sharon does like, and excuse my wobbly camera work, Sharon likes this one, which I'm not sure. Oh, there you go. You take that. There I think go. I thought you were passing it to me. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's a triple five, I think it's called. Yeah, I'm not sure. We'll have a look and let you know next time we go live. We can answer that anyhow on um, on Facebook for you. Yeah, we would definitely come to Mildura Tara. So you can round up all the local girls with, and boys. We'd love to come and see you. All right. So now I'm just going to open it all up now. So just keep stretching and stretching and really pulling down to get the shape and pin. So this is going to be an interesting one for us this week because all these, this particular hairstyle, plus two others, I actually have to create on 24 models in a three-hour prep time. So um, that's going to be a bit of fun, I think, actually. Are you passing for me, Jules? Yeah. So um, keep your fingers crossed that it all works out and I don't commit crazy hurry-curry. In the event that it's not happening <laughs> there's nothing worse than that pressure of fashion week is there those guys that are used to it and have done it they all know what it's all about here's a great question so Lloyd wants to know what's your best tip for pulling out braids on fine hair ah uh, well one of the things I always like to do is put a bit of um, crimping behind those braids Lloyd I find that that's really really important is to put a bit of body in there to start with I find that otherwise they just seem to go flat so, you know, even if you just do one little row of crimping at the base of your braid, that's going to give you a little bit more volume. And yes, it may sort of appear to snag, but a little bit of oil before you pull out is really a good thing as well. And don't use the anti-snag bands because, once again, that's such a nightmare when it comes to trying to pull the hair out. So, um, Cody, honey, we would love to come to Iowa. Our dear, dear friend, Dean Banowitz, is from Iowa. And so is, we should give him a little plug here, Sharon. Oh, we? yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. We've just, um, I just got a copy of Dean's book the other day, um, Daddy Do's. Dean, I think. Dean's Daddy Do's. Yeah, yeah, and it's a really cool book. And I was reading it as we were traveling um, away for a, a night um, holiday. And um, I was just laughing and laughing. I've got to say that guy is crazy. And he's written a really cool book. So it's on Amazon. If you want to get some information, you can see the links on the Facebook page. But yeah, I thought it was pretty amazing. Um, and good on you, Dean. Well done. I hope you uh, hope you do really well with the book. You really deserve to. So, we so go. we've got uh, uh, two lots to finish. I'm just going to just... We don't want to go on too much longer. We know that this should only be a 15 minute. And also we've got sort of a, a call booked at 9 o'clock to take for... For an You're event over. that we're You're doing, <laughs> that we're doing in America, so um, we're about to sort of take a phone call now. So, take a few of these out. Could be more pinned. Could be a little bit more pulled out. Don't judge me. Just trying to do it nice and quick. Trying to give you some ideas. Um, but we'll show you some finished looks from the bridal um, expo uh, once it's uh, once we do the event. I obviously would want to pin this braid onto the head a little bit more as well. So right. that would then pin through there. So Jodie's question is any spray? 
Now I will spray now, but I won't spray till I'm completely happy. So it really needs to be more, more refined, some more bobby pins put in it. The shape needs to be sort of fixed up a little bit more. Um, but from my end, I think, you know, that's a good starting point for us to start working through. This pin needs to pin. Now I'm just going to show you the tripod. Somebody has said their tripod moves. We use this one that's got the little foot on it there. So can you put your foot? Yeah, so Sharon can hold it with her foot. Yeah. Thank oh, you from London. Uh, we are coming to Houston, somebody's asked that again, and also to LA in, um, in August. So just check out our calendar for that. Mexico, we would love to see you. Why don't you talk to your people there and um, send us an email for that. We'd love to get Mexico on the calendar. Lots of people want us to go to Mexico. Uh, it's Farah from London. Do you remember the girls from London yes, last week? Yeah. Yes, how are they? How yeah, did they go good. with their, uh, how did they go with their, their do, their, their fronts that we taught them? We'll have to wait and find out. She's probably busy typing and our friends at uh, Atelier at Square Salon are typing in and saying hello. Hello and to my gorgeous friends down there. Lovely to see you online. Look, this should be a little bit looser. I'd like to see a few more little pieces falling out. But just to give you a bit of an idea of how I've executed that, the first stop was we did the braid across the top just to help us pin the false piece on. We've done the little ponytail at the back to give that little bit of a topsy tail and a twist so it lifts out. Two big braids through the front and just folded them back on themselves and then spanned them all out. It needs a little bit more shape, a little bit more work, but time doesn't allow that. Let me show you my other girl that we did as well. So we've worked with two shapes around the bottom. And hopefully next week we can come back with a couple of new shapes for you. So we want to try and do this as a regular thing on Facebook Live. So tell all your friends. We've got 2,000 people that we need to get to our 400,000 fans. So spread the word. We're happy to be here every week with you guys, giving you some, giving you some new ideas. And I hope you've liked what we've been able to give you today. And good luck with your styling today.